Hi everybody, Tom Novak here. Thanks for joining me and looking at a pretty straightforward case. In this case, we're talking a little bit about gum disease. Now gum disease is a little bit of a misnomer. Periodontal disease, the technical term, is actually a bone disease. The problem that we have with periodontal disease is that when the gums get inflamed and infected, largely because of debris that's stuck on the teeth, the gums get inflamed and the products of that inflammation dissolve the bone away from around the teeth. It's kind of like uh, digging dirt away from a fence post. So if we look at this x-ray here, okay, this is what we commonly call a bite wing x-ray. We look at these to check for the levels of the bone between the teeth and we look for cavities in between teeth a lot. But this x-ray is a great example of some tartar on some teeth. Technically, we call tartar calculus, but what it is is bacteria-laden calcified garbage that's on your teeth and infects your gums much like a sliver that gets under your skin. So when food debris remains on your teeth, if you miss it when you're brushing, it turns into plaque in, in the course of about oh, 12 to 24 hours. So plaque is like sticky mashed potatoes that are filled with bacteria and they bother the gums. The gums get inflamed. If that plaque stays on the teeth for any protracted period of time, minerals in your saliva will kind of complex with it and make it hard, kind of like scale on a bathtub. So these chunks of things that you see here are big chunks of tartar or calculus, as we call it, in between the teeth. We see that on the other side as well same patient. Now, this is a young man, late 20s, early 30s. So the bone levels in between these teeth are still pretty stable, but I've known him for quite some time. And every time I see him, oh goodness, I can see all the infection that's in his mouth. Now he's unaware of it, of course, but ultimately he comes into the office and we're gonna clean him up and get him in great shape. So technique wise, what happens is usually while you're numb, because gums in the presence of this stuff can be exquisitely tender. Often they'll bleed when you brush, you'll see blood in the sink. You'll notice that you have bad breath. Food doesn't taste particularly good because it's overcome by all the odor and taste of this blood and pus and garbage that's in here. I'll show you a picture of the same patient before we did any work. And it's a little unnerving, so brace yourself, but this is him beforehand. Now, you don't have to be a dentist to know that things don't look right. When we talk about gums being healthy, usually we like to see them pink, all right? These are pretty red to begin with, bordering on purple when we get down here. Now, believe it or not, there are teeth under here, but all this stuff here, again, you don't have to be a dentist to know that this isn't right. You can see rings of tartar around these teeth everywhere, certainly down here in front rings of stuff over here and all of it just acts like a sliver that gets under here and just makes everything really, really angry. For years we've seen cases like these and I've always wanted to get the photo that I'm going to show you next. Usually the way we'll approach cases like these is we'll numb half a mouth, maybe the right or the left, and scrape off all this garbage, sometimes while you're sedated, but it's usually a pretty straightforward procedure and it's really great. It's like getting a sliver out and when it happens, everything heals up so nicely. So in the next photograph, you're gonna see what happens to the tissue and I'd invite you to look at it carefully. You're gonna see what happens to the tissue when you just get the slivers out from under the skin. So we've done this on the patient's left and you can see a gigantic difference between where he was and where he is on his left hand side. On the right hand side, you can see that all this stuff still remains here. You can see the color of this tissue versus the color of this tissue. It's a dramatic improvement and we see this all the time. If we take the case to completion, here's everything off and I'll show you what the patient opened up a little bit so you can see T. All right, so here's a much better picture of health. This is maybe two weeks after, and he's come in just to get everything cleaned up and polished up and any maybe last little bit of fine tuning. You know, you get into a situation like this one by not having teeth cleaned maybe ever, or certainly not for years. And don't get me wrong, he's pretty accomplished at being able to build up tartar. So it was definitely a home care issue as well as just not ever being over here by us or anybody to kind of keep things clean. 
But once we get all this stuff off of here, it improves really dramatically. And at first, just to ensure that he can keep doing a good job, we might see him to clean his teeth every three months. If he can continue to keep everything clean and healthy and nice, we'll back off to four months. And ultimately, if he finds the healing power cosmic and finds dental religion, keeps everything really nice, we'll back him off to a six month continuing care interval, much like the rest of the planet. So that's kind of a work in progress about gum disease. If you need more information about that stuff, the other diseases that it affects like uh, heart disease and high blood pressure, stroke, cardiovascular illnesses, diabetes, premature deliveries, all that sort of stuff, it's something that you really want to address. But if you have questions or concerns or you know somebody who might need a little help with this, we're happy to help. This is a straightforward case that we see all the time. And if you have an interest, just give us a call at the office. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.